My name is Thomas Fields. I work for the Department of Public Works, um, the trash, sanitation trash. I just got off today. Um, it's like six hours nonstop. <laughs> nonstop. You would keep it moving six hours straight. No breaks, no lunch. Uh, just made it back. We left out early, so we just made it back. Um, I'm preparing to um, bury my son this weekend, and uh, my son's my son's memorial is uh, from nine to nine in Detroit. What up? What up? What up, everybody? It's your boy, sweet son, chef. So I just want to get y'all on track for this week. My son, 32 years old, Thomas Fields Jr., Navy vet, chef. Strong, 6'5", two, about 280, um, healthy, you know, he a diabetic, never selfish. He always wanted somebody to eat healthy. He did a cookbook. So other people that's in the same situation as him, they can take that cookbook and prepare real nice meals, real nice meals without all the sodium and the stuff that, that can cause you the problems and stuff that you have. And so, uh, man, he just had so, he had a, so much more to give. So much more to give. Live from NPR News in Washington, I'm Corva Coleman. President Trump plans to introduce an economic task force today. He says it'll work to create a plan to reopen the country's economy. He got sick. He was taking care of his mom. His mom had a fever. He ended up getting a fever. And um, we kept telling him to go to the hospital, go to the hospital. So they took the test and came back positive he had the coronavirus. My son's mother, she told me around about like 10 o'clock Sunday. I said, okay, well, keep me updated. Then I get the call like 2.30, 2.40 in the morning. I said my son passed away. The same energy and the same tenacity, and we conquered the day. And I laid back down, just like, looking up at the ceiling, like, what I'm going to do? I can't, I don't know, I don't even know what to do. I don't know what to do. I, I told my mother, my, woke my mother up, told her she was hysterical, so her crying, and my son, I mean, my brother, he crying. I just had to get out the house, so it was, I went on to work. If you don't have gloves, as I pull up, I see all the guys outside in a circle. And I see the director, Gildad, he having a, um, a speech. And they was talking about the coronavirus and the things that we need to do to protect each other. I just want to let y'all know this is serious, you know what I'm saying? I just lost my son this morning with coronavirus. And what? I'm here. He lived in Detroit, he just passed away, 32 years old. I'm just letting y'all, I'm just saying that to say that this is serious, you know what I'm saying? And we really got to look out for each other. I didn't know about his son until that day he announced it, because you know we've been on the truck together. I'm telling him sad. I was wondering why he even came to work that day, but that shows he's dedicated to his job. Being those we work in a trash truck, it's hard to be social distancing in a trash truck because you got three other people, two other people, plus you in the trash truck. So now it's like, I look at it like a, like a unit at war that you have to protect each other. It's, it's a scary feeling because you, you never know. You're around a person one day, then to find out the next day that they, they have. And you've been working with them, you know, in and out the yard with them day after day, and then they drop off. And you're like, where is he at? Oh, he just caught the, um, the virus. So, you know, it is, it's scary. When you're a brown person in the United States of America, you are conditioned as a child to let things go, to pull your pants up, be a big girl, be a man, and keep going so that you can take care of your family. You, you have a choice. You can accept this bad thing that happened, and you may think that it's unfair, um, but you still have to get up and go to work. You still have to provide for your family. You still have to take, there are people who are counting on you that you have to take care of. And I think that's the environment that Thomas was raised in, was to, okay, can't worry about that. We gotta keep going. We gotta keep working. We still have to get this done. Oh, I miss him so much. Just the interaction. We just had a conversation a week before he got sick and he said, Dad, pay attention. Make sure you got your mask and your gloves on because you know you got sarcoidosis. You got a lung disease. I don't want nothing happening to you. You know, this is my son saying this to me. And then my son get it and then die? 
Oh, man. It's, it, 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 you know, it's just unbelievable. You know, it's just unbelievable to the process. I just had this conversation with him. I just had this conversation with him. You know? Oh, man. Now I'm ready to go to Detroit and bury my only child. You know? It's going to be tough. On food. On the journey. Re-air C-SPAN radio programming from Wednesday. WCSPFM Washington. Why are more African Americans and Latinos affected? We're seeing this around the country. You know, it always seems that the poorest people pay the highest price. Why is that? Why is that? I just arrived at uh, Reagan National. About to start my journey to put my son to rest. It's early in the morning. <laughs> my flight leave in about, in about two hours, so I see I'm practicing as safety as possible. You know, only, only see about three, four people here. Um, the airport is pretty much empty. I'm not doing a plane by myself. I just pray I make it there safe. I'm in Detroit um, right now. When I got here and I started driving on the streets and I seen that it felt like to me, Thomas died and the city died with him. At the light, turn right onto Cass Avenue, then turn right onto Fort Street West. To imagine the loss of a person like him that was so good to people, that was so good hearted, so warm hearted, so loving, so compassionate, so considerate. He's a rare entity, and, it, and, and to me, he's like a piece of art. And for him to pass away at such a young age with so much life inside of him, I think that's really, really painful for Comet Senior, and he wishes that it was him. Um, I am, uh, I've been, both the uh, middle school teacher for Thomas Fields when he attended Malcolm X Academy, and I am uh, currently his principal as uh, he served as the school cultural facilitator. Um, it, it, again, it's an eerie feeling. Um, you have loved ones. My mother, um, unfortunately, has uh, succumbed to it and is in ICU. Um, at one of the uh, local hospitals and my family's faced with having to um, remove her from a ventilator uh, because her condition has gone beyond what medical management um, can handle right now. Lord, this morning we come with heavy hearts at the loss of our brother, our son, grandson, friend, Thomas. That, that's the first time I can say my heart really dropped from hearing the information about someone that had passed. Um, there's been someone that has passed away every day for the last week. And again, uh, with the climax of 12 people in one day on this past Tuesday. And um, I just not looked at my phone beyond catching your message or check my messages um, because I know that somewhere in a twine in the, um, in the information will be uh, news of someone else um, you know, uh, either being infected or passing away. Um, can we pause for a minute? Yes. Yes. We were, we were, we were waiting for our update today. We haven't gotten it yet, but that's the hospital. They, they're ready to, as I thought, they're ready to, um, remove her from the ventilator. Um, their prognosis is not that she's going to get any better. Uh, so, yeah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, join with me in praising the Lord. 
Jasmine, his fiance, she um she did the live screening because you know a lot of people couldn't go there, you know, on her Facebook. Me, I was waiting. I said I wait everybody out because I wanted to sit and have a conversation with my son. I hope y'all ready to go grocery shopping this day. The parent job is to protect the son, protect the children. So a part of me, you know, a part of me like, sometimes I'll be feeling like, dang, did I do enough? You know? Yeah. And that's what I was telling him, like, man, I hope you don't feel like I failed you by not being able to protect you, you know? But I know that God makes his decisions and we got to live with it. It was just, you know, just, just sitting there with him and just not having that feedback like we used to have, just sitting there just talking. You know, that was that was the hard part, you know, just better. They had to sit with him without being disturbed or somebody coming to say, it's going to be okay. It's not. Oh, you lose your only job. It's not going to be okay. And that's why I came to the airport. My flight was late. I just want to, I just want to get out of Detroit. I just want to get out of here. You know, I can't take him with me. Dang. It just takes so much. You know, first day back after my uh, three day bereavement. It's a little chilly today. Everything good? Yeah, man. <laughs> back at the, uh, the relieving the trash from the city. Yeah, yeah. You know, being essential work is so important. Everybody, every, all hands on deck. I believe that. I just pray that my son be with me and I just take it a day at a time. Sweet sign chef. I keep the band on because I know he'll be with me until, you know, I'll never take it off. And I and to, to God take my soul. You know, it's waterproof so I can take a shower with it. So I'll never have to take it off. When I'm on the trash truck, he just come to my head. And you know, you're on the side of that trash truck, you just lean your head back and be like, all right, Slim, I hear you. You know, I just I just think about them like that, and I just be like, wow, you know, and I just you know, it just comes something happen, or a memory will come. He in my heart, so I just think about him like that, and just I just keep pushing, just keep pushing on. So 